This is Jonathan Agoff here for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined by James Beach Jr., soon to be British and Commonwealth title challenger, um, just in a few days' time. Uh, James, how are you doing, man? I'm good, thanks, mate. I'm uh, just excited for it now, lock sites, coming to the end of camp. I'm just looking forward to it now. Yeah, um, obviously a big, big fight um, on Friday, uh, next Friday. Uh, by the time it goes out, it might be a fight week. But um, yeah, at BT Sports Studios, you're facing Brad Foster. Um, but before we get into that, um, I do want to find out a bit more about how you sort of got into boxing. What, what's your roots in? My dad was a professional boxer, so I've always been in all around the gyms. I used to go with with him up BCB uh, when I was about six and train over the road um, above the library. And then I think I started about 11 properly, had my first fight as soon as I turned 11 and then I've just took to it ever since. Was it always the plan to be a boxer seeing, you know, your dad as a boxer? Was it Was it always boxing for you? Yeah, it's always been boxing really. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I mean, there's a kid growing up as amateur, all you wanted to do was turn professional. And then as soon as you turn professional, all you want to do is like box for a British title and Commonwealth title. And it's massive, really. You just want to be in big fights. Did you, were you a big boxing fan growing up in terms of, you know, watching certain fighters, seeing, you know, what they did? Yeah, all the time. I mean, me and my dad used to watch um, Friday night fight night. And it's kind of like what they're bringing back now with the proper 50-50 fights. It weren't all the big names that they're trying to build up and stuff like they, um, like they have been over the past few years. It was just names that you hadn't really heard of that was proper 50-50 dust-ups and it was better like that. It was more old-school proper fights. Mm. Are there any sort of old-school boxes you specifically watched you can remember? Nah, none really. My, my favourite boxer was probably Ricky Hatton, like most other English people. But other than that, I just used to enjoy boxing. Mm. Um, you've sort of built um, quite well through the professional ranks, um, unbeaten at the moment. Um, what was your what was your amateur career like? My amateur career was quite good, really. I had eight amateur fights and one fifty. I won um, five Midlands titles. Um, and I, I think we boxed to the national semi-finals every year all round about and I was always around that level I just couldn't get that push to just win a national title at um, the amateur level but I think I'm a much better pro mm. Is there anyone sort of currently um, boxing specifically that you've sort of shared the ring with as sort of an am amateur or sparring? The winner? Um, um, I don't know really. There's, I boxed a, a couple of good lads as amateur. I boxed um, Gary Cully in my last fight. I boxed a couple of good lads like Brandon Dodd, Callum Sky Noise at Milburn, who had all won European medals. I, I sparred Liam Davis a lot, who was a top amateur as well. He won European medals. And um, yeah, I've shared the ring with a lot of people really. Hmm. Um. Going into Friday, Friday night, um, you're facing Brad Foster, um, British and Commonwealth bantamweight titles, uh, super bantamweight titles. Um, excuse me, um, on the 10th of July. Um, how did this opportunity come about? Well, I think it's more that I heard it was kind of in talks about March time, but I think that was to like, like before all this coronavirus stuff. Mm. And I think um, it would have been better for the fans like, because we both sell big tickets. So they probably got my name from that because they heard I was a big ticket seller and it was going to sell a load of tickets. And then I just had the phone call about five, six weeks ago and um, I was just buzzing. I was buzzing, I got the call. Mm. Um, what I find quite intriguing about this fight is that you're both you know, from the same sort of area um, of Walsall, so it's a bit of a derby. Um, did did you know each other a bit uh, before before the fight was made? Nah, n nothing really. I'd, obviously, we've probably been on each other's radars as we've both come from the Midlands and stuff. But 
we uh, we don't really know each other or know of him. He seems a nice kid, and uh, I wish him all the best in his career. But next Friday, I'm gonna have to put it aside, and I'll, I'll be ready to say what it is. Yeah. What have you made of um, sort of how Brad Foster's done so far in his career? Um, obviously, British and Commonwealth champion. Um, he had that fight with Lucian Reed last time out. Two fights with Lucian Reed. Um, what have you What have you made of his career so far? Yeah, well, he, he's doing well. He's, I mean, he's won a British and Commonwealth title, and like I say, I've seen interviews and stuff with Grant Warren, and he's on about talking him, like European world level and stuff. If he gets past me, but I, I really don't think he'll get past me. I, I really believe I'm, I'm in that much of good shape, and I'm feeling that confident for it. I really believe I'm going to cause an upset next week. What What do you feel like you have to do to beat him next week? Just stick, just concentrate, and just stick to my boxing like and now I can. I've, I've switched off in fights in the past, and I ain't going to be able to do that against Brad Foster because he's too high of a level, and he'll capitalise on it and he'll, he'll make you pay. So I've just got to stay concentrated all the time. Mm. Have you seen anything? I mean, I, I don't expect you to tell me the game plan or anything, but have you seen anything in previous fights of his that uh, gives you sort of confidence, or is it just natural self belief? Yeah, you, of, of, I'd have natural self belief anyway, as every boxer does. If you ask, if you ask someone, anyone of who's a boxer, they're going to have massive self belief. You've got to have in this game, but. I have sort of a couple of flaws that I'm hoping to expose and I'll doubt next Friday. It's obviously um, at BT Sports Studio, um, no fans. Um, what are the challenges in your mind? Um, or, you know, does it will it affect you at all? No, I don't believe it will because I think I'm just that set on the British and Commonwealth title and I've just got that in my mind. That, it don't matter if one person there or 10,000 people are there. I've just That's all I've got in my head at the minute, just winning that title. Mm. So in terms of uh, when you found out about this fight, uh, were you sort of training for a date in mind? I mean, you know, I guess it's, be, it's been difficult over the sort of the last 12 weeks to do intense training, but were you ticking over and then sort of got the fight date? Uh, they opened the gyms up. The board says we're allowed to open the gyms up the week before. So mm. I've kind of started ticking off for like a week and a half before properly with Peter, uh, my trainer. But I was doing little runs and stuff on my bike from April till, uh, when was he? About mid, about mid May, I think, end of May when we found out. So um, I, I was just doing bits, but I weren't 100% like four ball at it. I don't think any boxer has been really. It's hard to keep that discipline done. Like the level of training you put in when you've got a fight coming up compared to when you've not got one coming up. Completely different. Mm. Uh, despite obviously no fans um, inside the venue, um, it is on BT Sport. It is the first show that Frank Warren's put back on. Um, there's going to be a lot of people watching at home most definitely. So, in terms of exposure as well, this is you know a massive, massive fight. Yeah, it's massive exposure, really. I mean, it's a massive opportunity for myself. It's it's kind of the stuff that you want when you first turn professional, and then now it's come all all on focus on that British title. To be honest, I ain't bothered about no exposure, none of that. I know it's going to come with it, but. I'm just sat set on that British title at the minute. That's all I can think about. Mm. Um, just obviously, um, as I know, you were two weight uh, Midlands area champion, um, obviously at feather and super featherweight. Um, you're coming down to uh, super bantamweight for this fight. Um, is that uh, been a challenge to to cut the weight at all, or is it is it been you know something that's been um, quite easy to adjust to? It's been quite easy to adjust to, really. But, I mean, I'm, I'm more or less nearly at the weight now. Mm. And we're, like, a week and a bit out. I could make the weight probably for this weekend. Um, I, it's just, I've always wanted to box the tight stone 10 at Super Bantam weight. Of it. I've only boxed the featherweight and Super featherweight because that's where the opportunities have lied. So, I've just took what fights I've been offered, really. 
Hmm. Um, we spoke a bit off camera there before about sort of you're heading down on Tuesday um, to London. Um, have you been told about any of the procedures? I know in Vegas um, for the top rank shows, they've been sort of, you know, in a hotel uh, isolated until basically the moment of the fight. Have you been told any of the procedures that are going to gonna happen? Yeah, well, it, it pretty much sounds like we're basically in an hotel isolated till the fight. We're just allowed out to um, train at scheduled times, I believe, in the gym, in the hotel, and and to eat, and that's it. So, to what I know, um, I, I ain't too phased, boys. It's only two, three days of your life, mm. and it's worth the opportunity, so. Um, what would it mean if you were to, to be successful in the British and Commonwealth titles? Um, obviously, still early on in your career, um, but, yeah, what, what would it mean to you? It mean everything to me, to be honest. I mean, like I say, this is probably my world title fight. Like, for myself, this I've got myself up more for this fight than I have any other fight. And um, I, I really believe I'm, I'm going to be able to pull it off. It's a massive opportunity for myself, and I've just got to leave it all in the ring. Mm. Um, finally, on, on this, what's, what's your prediction? James Beach win. I don't know how I'll win, but I will make sure I get that win. Hmm. Um, final one, just sort of um, as a boxing fan, the whole world's been sort of talking about um, Fury and Joshua over sort of the past few weeks. Um, big, big fight for the UK. What's your thoughts on it? I think Fury, to be honest, uh, pro- probably outpoint him, uh, avoid outpoints as well. I, I've always thought Pierre is a miles better boxer. Hmm. For you, is it important that would you like that fight to happen in the UK? I think most people would like it in the UK, but there is obviously talk that it may go abroad. Um, what What do you reckon? Yeah, it should happen in the UK ideally. I mean, they're both British. There's no reason they couldn't go away. But at the end of the day, boxing's a business, and if you're getting paid more money to go and fight fight in another country you ain't going to turn down a job for half the price when you can go and do it over there for double the money it makes sense if it makes sense it, you do it mm. well James I appreciate you coming on um, before this big fight on Friday night um, on BT Sport and uh, I wish you all the very best of luck for the British and Commonwealth Super Bantam oh, Week Thanks for having us <laughs>